and welcome to This Week in James City County. I'm your host, Renee Dahlman. Today I am joined by Barb Watson. Barb is the Assistant Social Services Director for James City County. Welcome, Barb. Hey, hi, Renee. This is your first visit to the podcast. Very first. Well, I'm so happy you're here. Okay. (laughs) It's going to be fun. Now, I understand because it is hurricane season, you all have a resource that a lot of people don't know about. And I thought it would be great if you could come in and share it with us. I'd be happy to. Social Services maintains a special and functional needs list. And this is for folks who may have some special needs in case there was an emergency and Mm -hmm. we might have to open shelter or Mm -hmm. they might need transportation. This list is open to folks who have a physical or mobility issue, Mm -hmm. or they may have equipment that would require, say, electricity if we lost power. Okay. Every May... We call people who are on our list Mm -hmm. to update their information, um, to see if anything's changed, whether their living situation has changed or maybe in some cases they've passed away Mm -hmm. in certain circumstances. Mm -hmm. But we want to keep it up to date. Mm -hmm. And we also realize that, as you said earlier, there are a lot of people that don't know about this list. And so we really would like to get the word out. People stress when there is an emergency out right. there, but folks who have special functional needs may need some additional support. Mm-hmm. So that might be calling them. Mm-hmm. You know, if they are on their list, we give them a call and we say, you know, we're going to open shelter mm-hmm. and offer them the opportunity to ask for assistance in developing a plan. And that plan might be sheltering in place. Okay. Or okay. also asking if they might need transportation to a shelter okay. if we were indeed going to open. Okay. When you say special and functional needs, what are examples? Some examples of that might be mobility issues. So okay. are they in a wheelchair? Is the wheelchair an electric wheelchair? Right. Are they in crutches? But it also might be that they're hearing impaired or they have equipment that makes them electrically dependent. Okay. And so they're going to need power wherever they are visually impaired. Maybe they have oxygen. They're deaf and would need an interpreter. Okay. So really we're looking at... If for some reason you would have to evacuate or even shelter in place, would you be able to do that on your own Mm -hmm. without any assistance? Mm -hmm. And would you, when you make it to the shelter, would you need somebody to help you while you're in the shelter? The shelter accommodations are very basic. Okay. And so if someone does have a special functional need, they're going to bring somebody with them to help. Okay. Our staff is not trained Mm -hmm. to do that you know a shelter is really to provide a safe place to get out of the storm um some place that has electricity and a cot you know Mm -hmm. so these this isn't going to a hotel right um these are very basic services that we can provide we do utilize the health department Mm -hmm. for just again some some basic services okay well and another thing that i just thought about that we have a lot of folks in our community that have diabetes. And if you're insulin dependent, that insulin needs to remain cold. Exactly. And we do have a refrigerator available because every location where there would be a shelter does have electricity and Mm -hmm. we have a generator. And so we do make that also available to those folks who would need to refrigerate medication. Okay. Say I have a neighbor and I know that this neighbor could benefit from this. Mm -hmm. They're probably going to ask me, I'm going to give the government all this information about myself. Who are they going to share it with? Do you all share that information? The information that we collect on folks is is very confidential. Okay. And it's only used with emergency personnel if indeed you're coming to a shelter or if you need to be transported somewhere. Okay. So it's not distributed in any way. It's It's kept confidential. And so we do not share that information unless we absolutely have to with Emergency personnel. Right. And you all aren't going to go all up in people's business, right? No. No. We want some basic information. Your name, your address, what type of residence do you have? Do you have pets? And do you have a service animal or are you required to have a service animal? Do you need transportation to the shelter, as I mentioned earlier? Do you have an emergency plan? Would you like assistance in mm-hmm. creating that plan? And then again, all of the, the questions about mobility or some of your disability or medical information. But again, basic kinds of things. 
are you an English speaker? Because mm-hmm. we may have folks who come to the shelter who English might not be their primary language. And we always ask for an emergency contact person and then what that relationship is and their contact information mm-hmm. so that we can make sure that we get in touch with you. I know that from past hurricanes and other emergencies, a lot of the phone calls that we get are from adult children who live out of state or out of the area. They're watching the Weather Channel and they're worried and concerned about their parents or about their sisters or whatever it might be. Can they then work with their parent to get them on this list? Absolutely. If you go to James City County's website Mm -hmm. under social services, Mm -hmm. the special functional needs form is there. You can fill it out online. Okay. And it directly goes to our coordinator that gathers this information. So it's very, very easy. And then if there are questions that they have, Mm -hmm. you know, you're always welcome to call our office for additional information. What is that telephone number? That's 757-259-3100. Okay, great. So this is a really great idea for those that have family out of the area. And, you know, when an emergency happens, everybody gets nervous. And, Absolutely. And it's just another nice person that can check on you and say, hey, is everything okay? Do Absolutely. you need, do you have electricity? Do you have whatever it is that you need? And I think that's a great service that you all offer. Thank you. Thank Very you. Very good. So that website would be jamescitycountyva.gov. Correct. And then you'd look for departments and then you'd go to social, to social services. services. Okay. Yes. Very good. Now, is there a form that people can also print out and mail in if they need to? Yes. If you go to our website, mm-hmm. the form is printable. Okay. So it is in printed version. So if you would prefer to print it out. But we also have the special function needs brochures in all of the county buildings. So you're welcome to pick up, you know, one there. And we also have shared these brochures with our community agencies. Okay. And so you're likely to find those brochures out in the community. Very good. You know, you may have a neighbor or you may have someone that you know from church that may not be aware of this program. And if you think it's something that they can benefit from, Definitely make sure you let them know. Absolutely. I highly encourage everybody to spread the word because I do feel that it's an underused service that we have. Absolutely. Something that you mentioned, and I think we should get a little bit more information on, Mm -hmm. would be pets, whether they're service animals or whatnot. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Service animals are always allowed in the shelters. We also do pet sheltering. Okay. It's a little bit of a challenge because we require those bringing pets. They need to have their, their animal crated. Mm-hmm. Um, we do have volunteers that help, but the person who owns the pet does need to have some role in the care of their animal while okay. they're at the shelter. But we do allow pets. Okay. Crated pets. Crated pets. Crated yes. pets at the shelters. And just so people know, if you do bring your pet to the shelter with the crate, will that pet be able to stay with you at your cot? No. Okay. Um, the way that the shelters are organized, there is a special area near the dormitory area, if you will, where the pets are kept. Okay. Again, as I said, we have volunteers who will staff that area. Mm-hmm. But if you are going to bring a pet in addition to the crate, please bring their food or anything that's going to make them more comfortable because they'll also be stressed right. during this time. Right. Absolutely. Well, very good. What number should people call then, again, if they're interested in learning more, if they don't have access to the Internet? Mm-hmm. Call 757-259-3100. Okay, great. Now, Barb, as you know, I have a few questions that I need to ask that will help people get to know you a little bit better. Okay. Okay, are you ready? I'm ready. All right. They're not very scary, I promise you. Okay. Okay. What is your biggest pet peeve? My biggest pet peeve are people complaining about something but not willing to to do something to help solve it. But it's so much easier to just complain. Of course it is. Of course it is. I think everybody has has some responsibility to what make what annoys them. Right. All so right. So that's my biggest pet Well, peeve. very good. And you answered that one fast. Okay. All right. Have you ever had a nickname? Ugh. Yes, I have. I've had several. Okay. Would you like to share any of those with us? Okay. Um... My primary nickname was Babby. Babby. Which I 
hate it. So <laughs> no one, please call me that. Gotcha. Um, I ignore the name now. Okay. And then my dad used to call me Charlie Brown. Charlie, why? Do you know? Well, I don't know if he got his um, Peanuts characters mixed up or not because... <laughs> I I sucked my thumb like okay. Linus. Right. Um, I didn't carry a blanket, okay. but I did suck my thumb. But he called me Charlie Brown. <laughs> That's awesome. So we cannot call you? I prefer Charlie Brown if you can call yeah. me anything or call me Charlie and not Babby. <laughs> <laughs> but you will always respond to Barb. I, absolutely. Absolutely. Very good. See, these questions are easy. Okay. Now I feel like I should find a hard one for no. you. No. All right. And what is your favorite book or favorite type book to read? Do you read books? I do read books. Okay. And I... Not implying that you don't read. I know. But, I understand. you know, people are busy. I didn't and, take it that way. Okay, um, I really like women authors. Uh-huh. And I like um, light mysteries, okay. if you will. Uh-huh. I don't like the blood and guts kind right. of stuff. Are they called cozy mysteries or something like I'm that? I'm not sure exactly what the term is, okay. but I like those kind of light fun but kind of but has some mystery to it right i agree with you You i think that's what i like too because sometimes they get a little too intense uh, yeah i'm not no that's not fun or relaxing no at all (laughs) at all (laughs) well and barb i just realized that since this is your first time here there are a couple of general questions that we normally ask that we have not asked okay so these are easy tell us about your family well, I have two adult daughters, mm-hmm. um, one in Northern Virginia and one here in Williamsburg. Okay. Two grandchildren, grandson and granddaughter, and a wonderful husband, Robert. Very nice. And how long have you lived in James City County or the Williamsburg area? Um, Over, wow, how long has it been? Since 1968. Long time. Long time. Long time. So almost a native. Almost, yeah. Almost a native. But the way I always think of it is I have given birth to two natives, (laughs) right? Because we'll never, ever. No. So maybe that counts. I think so. Maybe that counts. But yeah, I always describe myself as almost a native. Almost. Very good. Where would you say your favorite place to go vacation is? Mm, Aruba. Ooh, nice. Aruba. Uh, Very nice. And if you had company coming to visit you Mm -hmm. for a week, let's say, what are three experiences in James City County that you would want to make sure that they have before they go back home? Um, I'd like them to go down to the Jamestown Beach. Okay. Because I think it's really cool. It and is very it's cool. It's just, it's kind of ours and it's, it just, it's very local, mm-hmm. you know, so I think it's kind of cool. Where's another place I would take them? There's so many cool places. Freedom Park would probably be another okay. thing that I would that I would choose just because of the building that's there. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've had several event family events there mm-hmm. and the historical aspect mm-hmm. because my family really likes history. And then also the wonderful trails that okay. you can participate in. And I guess my final place. There's so many to choose I from. I know. I mean, our parks are awesome. Right. You know, um, I would just think I would, I'd probably, one of our favorite trails is the trail off of Green Springs Road Mm -hmm. and either walking or biking along those. That would probably be my third choice. Very nice. What a good trip. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Very active and outside. Yes. (laughs) And hopefully not as hot as it is right now. Correct. 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 Well, Barb, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast. It wasn't scary, was it? Not not too bad. Not too bad. Well, thank you for coming in and talking about this very important program. All right. Thank you. Well, that wraps up this episode of This Week in James City County. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, please take a moment and subscribe to our podcast. That way you will be sure to never miss an episode. You can also go to our website. We're at jamescitycountyva.gov slash podcast. And while there, you're going to be able to find all of our previous episodes, as well as a form. And on that form, you can let us know what you think. If you have any feedback, we would love to hear it. Or if you have other ideas for shows or guests, please let us know. So that wraps it up and we will talk with you next week.